Yeah. We went to a meditation retreat, didn't we? It was amazing, but it was really difficult. For anyone who is considering doing a meditation retreat, it's really fucking hard. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you buy a MacBook rather than a PC? Anyone, use a PC for three minutes and it'll answer that question. So, so, so I've been rear-ended twice in the last month. In a car. In a car. We should clarify yeah. that. In a car, yeah. You know what it is? As soon as you feel that impact, the sense is, it's not like, ah, I'm an e-. it's, it's just all of the admin flashes before you <laughs> All of the, like, oh, like my God, bright the, light. the paperwork. Oh. <laughs> this is why you shouldn't be allowed on a plane unless you've got an iPhone. And everything would be much simpler because the people who've made bad decisions would be confined to the where they live. They've you've finally got onto the life hack of getting your hair cut at home, haven't you? Yeah, I have. Before the hairdresser went round to his, she mm. texted me to say, hang on a second, I'm about to go around to this person's house that I've never met before. I probably should think about my own safety. Is he, is he a weirdo? And I'm like... <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, look who's joined me again. Johnny and Yusuf from propanefitness.com. It's been a long while. Welcome back. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome to us. Welcome to Yusuf. (laughs) (laughs) So today we're doing a catch-up episode. No agenda, no topics in hand other than just what's been going on in our lives recently. So what's been going on in your life recently, Jonathan? What have you been doing? Why do you, I was just throwing famous the TV hot potato. <laughs> there you go. Oh, see, yeah, I have been on TV today. Love it's Island. Like I play Love Island, Island twenty nineteen. <laughs> Christ, Love Island. But yeah, you can so think of anything worse than going to Love Island. Do you not allow? There are laptop? some worse things. Ads manager is. <laughs> you wouldn't be able to do <laughs> Facebook limits. ads. So why were you on TV? God. So, I was basically put on TV by someone who wanted to go on Pointless but didn't have a partner. <laughs> So if you if you don't watch Pointless, it's a it's aired. I think it's six days a week in the UK. Have you ever seen Pointless? No. You probably seen the now. bit that I was in. Yeah. Right. right yeah. So that was very much like me before I realised, like on the train on the way down, I should probably watch an episode of this. <laughs> Just so on a hotspot and quickly get an episode. Right, yeah. Right, so there's a man. He asks. So questions. in the in like the the warm up. So you arrive. I'm in the room, and the woman said. Sometimes people get to this point and they haven't seen an episode of the show, and I'm like, <laughs> like I'm, so that is a common problem. Then it's not like because I no, thought no, you no. would be the only person. She was who, making that out to be at least it's not that bad, you know. At least it's not that ridiculous. And you're just like, because <laughs> because when you're there, you're in their world, and everyone's there taking it very seriously. And the fact that you think it's all pointless and stupid, yeah. pointless, yeah. isn't funny. And it's <laughs> not funny to you either because you're about to go on national TV and potentially be made to look like an absolute prick. But it, it actually went all right. It actually went all right. Can you tell us about your jumper? This oh, jumper? yeah. No, no. So, oh, the ju- oh. So, so I called Johnny <laughs> the, day, the day before he had to go down. And he was it like, was the day of. You said, I, I, I can't talk. I'm in Primark. I'm having a nightmare. <laughs> I wasn't allowed to wear any of my jumpers, and I have to get a plain orange, green, or blue jumper. Couldn't be. I couldn't be green. So it, it, the blue Video had a spe- like, spe- obviously a very green. specific blue. Oh, okay. Which is why it was the blue that I was wearing. And you only have navy... So you're not, the, the biggest problem is you're not allowed anything with a logo. Yeah. And you have had an embroidery that's three centimetres tall, mm. like visible only from up close, but, but was not too allowed. much. Yeah. So that, that's but all my clothes. You, you had a name tag, didn't you? Yeah. So can they not just stick that on top of the logo? It depends on the, the position. So the so name tag's also have, got a very... They try and line the, the name tags up because I'm taller than... Has to be at the middle. What, so was yours at your, uh, your belly button? Mine was, yeah. No, no. <laughs> It was slightly. <laughs> Mine was mid thigh. Yeah. It's just not how it appears. Um, but yeah, it was it was fine. It was quite I stressful. You, you came across very well. Thanks. If, I'm excited. A- anyone who has not seen Johnny's episode of Pointless, it's now available on BBC iPlayer. Could be for the from... next 29 days. Okay. So hurry the so, hell up. Mm. You need to go and watch it now. Do you know what, what episode number it is? No. Twelve. <laughs> Thank you. Is that a joke? No. I'll, uh, if I, I can find it, I'll 12. put a link in yeah. the show notes oh, okay. below. So go and watch. Yusuf, what's been going on in your life? What's been happening? I've just been deep in the work cave, unfortunately. There's not, you can see from my pasty complexion, I'm racially Arab and <laughs> you wouldn't know. It's all been sucked out of you. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I've got my finals coming up. So uh, in three months' time, if I pass, then. Doctor. Doctor. You could be, you, you could be looking at someone's ailments. So it's, yeah, it's, it's, are the semi-finals now? So the, these are the semi-finals. Right, and then, and then you get you qualify into the finals. Into the tournament and the, right. yeah. the premiership. And there's that, the ra- there's a round the, robin, isn't there, the at the start? Yeah. That, that's all the football words I know in, the, in, in five seconds. Offside. Probably premiership. Offside. Premiership. Premiership. Yeah. 
Are you showing up? You're showing off with your double pigeon, aren't you? I've got a slightly tight left hip, as Versa. always happens when, yeah. when I sit on this fucking sofa. Yeah. It's a oh, different sofa. I've seen you on that podcast with the giant. He's always, he's always <laughs> got a, a tight Hello hip. There. There, was, there was someone who commented on the Love Island video saying, why is that blonde guy so, so big? big? Yeah. And you're like... Because you were just like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was when you were at peak 105 kilos as well, wasn't so it? So the, the interesting thing, so there's another episode of Pointless, right, that's yet to air. So I thought it was going to be on tonight. It wasn't on tonight. So there's obviously a gap because mm-hmm. there was a gap in filming of like three months. Mm-hmm. And in that time, I think I gained about five kilos and grew my hair. <laughs> so you look like a completely so I, different... Yeah, so, so, so fair enough. Happened, they're like, oh, you've ruined the continuity. I, I bet job. they were about to run them day by day. And they're like, fucking hell, that tore out. Like, we can't now. Because <laughs> they, they say, like, try not to change your appearance. And I'm like, mm-hmm. <laughs> Sorry, mate. I, I, I just commenced on Project Top Knot. You I just moved up a weight class. Well. So when in the intro bit where they're like, oh, Johnny, hello, welcome. What do you do? And you were like, I'm an online fitness coach. And they were like, well, what's that? <laughs> yeah. So, you, you know, you work in a gym at home and then you, you tell people. No, but, no, no, that's all no. I mean. Pajamas. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, one of the lads oh. the other day had a Skype interview for a placement. And one of the boys that he lives with took a photo from the side and he'd gone full suit from the waist up oh, and boxes from the waist that's down. That's excellent. The Trevor McDonald. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's been happening in Chris? Inside of Chris? Inside of me. Inside of the Chris conversation. Know. Um, we went to a... We did a... What is there in your water? There's a pube. I don't think it's a pube. <laughs> Maybe it's one of my beard hairs. It's, it's unlikely. Most likely. <laughs> it's most likely, yeah. I, you, it's funny how you just assume short hair is pube, a pube. Short hair, actually, yeah. It's more likely to be... Well, if you've got someone to... saying there's a pube is very year nine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. it, there might be genes called pubes. Am I made that up? <laughs> yeah. Maybe. I think so. Another year nine thing. Wearing the chain with your wallet on. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. School trousers. Clip it on, and then it comes back, and then your wallet goes in your pocket. Yeah. Just in case someone was going to steal. People it. used to wear South Park characters on their jeans. You remember them? Oh, it's like with a little People stand. used to have a little Ken <clears throat> or a little Kyle. Or Kyle Year seven. Stan. Flat hair, and then yeah. And the shockwaves. Was... Shockwaves. Well, wet look. Shockwaves over the Yeah. We went to a meditation retreat, didn't we? We did. We did a one day in Harnham Monastery called Harnham. Harnam Aruta Nigiri mm-hmm. in Belsay. Beautiful place. It was amazing, but it was really difficult for anyone who is considering doing a meditation retreat. It's really fucking hard. <laughs> like, it's yeah. the physical part of it that's hard, isn't it? Oh, it's just staying awake. Like, you know, really? being, being sedentary, but also staying awake, but having your eyes closed. Like, it's, yeah, an odd blend of, of time. it's an odd blend of... Uh, so where did you sit? On the yeah, floor. Outside, inside. So we did... Fit pretty much 50-50 of either walking or feel out, as in uh, outside meditation, versus uh, feel in sitting. So I was sat in a beanbag or walking around a lake, which was pretty beautiful. But is there like a room in the monastery that you go to? There's a number of rooms. Is there? So we went and sit in the Dharma Hall, <clears throat> where they've got sandalwood burning and a big big Buddha statue, oh, nice. and just a rack full of different cushions. And you can choose like the cushion based on your wow. preference. So, yeah. And were there other people there? Pretty much no one. Yeah. Quite quiet. They should, like they should speak to, they should speak around. to us at Voodoo Events, like we get that place. Fill it. Yeah. Around, yeah, buzzing. <laughs> but they'd love that. <laughs> yeah, like v- VIP cushions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Q yeah. jump cushions. Yeah, exactly. Buy one, get one free cushion. Yeah, that's all, all of the, all of the above. Um, what else has been happening? A lot of podcasting, a lot of podcasting, podcasted with Rory Sutherland, which you enjoyed. Anyone who has not listened to the episode with Rory Sutherland, Go and check it out now if you'll be in the show. <laughs> show notes below. Chris getting absolutely pied. When Railroad is. Yeah. <laughs> it is excellent. Good well, episode. So during the podcast with Rory, the British gas man came round to fix his boiler because he'd had a problem. And Rory's a little bit like, kind of like Brian Blessed from Blackadder. And he's a big sort of gruff British man. And he, he speaks like that and everything's a bit fucking shit, isn't it? <laughs> and he, uh, <laughs> the British gas guy came round. And see, I've cut bits out. But I had to, or I endured the entirety of the exchange, and it was just hilarious. This British gas guy comes back after he's set him away, and we're still podcasting, and I left this bit in. Sure enough, he comes back into the room, and he's like, oh, mate, it's, uh, it's all done in there now. Oh, I, I, well, Chris, one second. What, what, what's that? 
Uh, it's uh, all right. So, oh, f- uh, bloody hell already! Yeah, well, you had uh, you had three leaks actually. Coming one at the top, one in the one in the middle, one at the bottom. Uh, I, I, I must give you. I must give you twenty pounds. <laughs> And he goes, no, mate, mate, it's it's absolutely fine. He's like, no, 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 I insist, I insist. <laughs> have a have a good uh, have a what day is it? Uh, it's Friday. Have a, have, a, have a good weekend. And then he gets back on the podcast and he hasn't put his headphones in yet. And I didn't realise. And I said, Rory, is that a smartwatch you're wearing? Right. So. <laughs> Asia. And I'm like, oh, fuck. Like, for anyone who's listening, it just sounds like you've had the biggest cream yeah. pie ever. But so, so I was going to ask you whether he tipped him. Because I just heard that, no, 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 I insist, I insist. Yeah, I, I think, think he got he got 20 quid out of his wallet and gave it to him. He, the, the thing that I really liked about him is the way he swears. Very tactical. Yeah. Because you know when sometimes people use swearing as, as filler, mm-hmm. the way he swears really makes... It sound better. It's, it's an better, accentuating, it's better yeah. Because he said fucking, oh, fucking hell, yeah, brilliant. It's because it's very deliberate. I think yeah. some people swear when they're thinking of words and buying for time. Fulton, Fulton, yeah. yeah, yeah. Whereas this, you was, do that, don't you? Constantly, <laughs> all, the time, swear, yeah. all the time. But it's idiosyncratic as well for a lot of people. Whereas his is very deliberate, very yeah. precise mm-hmm. speech. Which I think is that precise speech is one of the. If you were to design a good podcast guest, all of the best podcasts that I've done. <laughs> with people who are precise with their mm. speech, there's nothing more or less than they need to say. And they yeah. say exactly what they need to. Yeah. I just think his opinion, I'm, I feel such an affinity with him because of his opinion towards the shut which is the bum spray, the high pressure bum spray that they use. Cause he was like, in what other world would you get a bit of poo on your face? And just, oh, I'll just wipe that off with a bit of dry paper. It'll be fine. It's a disgrace. I mean, it's absolutely barbaric. I mean, in what other- the, the Arabs, they've got it. They've got it right. Haven't they? And it goes. The I bit where don't he's, know how I feel about this. What about the bum spray? Yeah. I mean, wet toilet paper. People think it's just for fucking perverts, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> things for people, people with medical problems, and <coughs> but so he he says that if we put those pre-wetted toilet papers rather than on the top shelf of the supermarket where it looks like the, the pervert shelf, yeah. mm-hmm. if you just put it somewhere that's really accessible, yeah. then you can well, turn it into sales. a mainstream thing. Well, yeah. I just he's. he's I was saying this to Yusuf, like his job is just to sit and think, isn't it? At the top of a, a big mountain. He's, he's at the top of a big organisation and he's just got a big chair in a room. <laughs> Cigar, where he just Chesterfield. And thinks <laughs> about like, where might the world be going? So he'd, um, if you go on Ogilvy's website and if he's you He's not listen, on there, is he? No, no, he is. So oh, is I he? implore you to go on and have a look and it says, Rory Sutherland, Vice Chairman of Ogilvy Advertising. And below that, the, I swear to God, one of the first couple of sentences is something akin to Rory created his own job title, which is purposefully vague. <laughs> like, mate, is there, a, vice... is there a chairman? Yeah, there will be. It, but it must be on the board, I'm going to presume as well. Mm. Um, but then there's like Ogilvy UK, Ogilvy, blah, blah, blah. Because David Ogilvy is dead. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So now it's, they set up this massive... All over the world, big, man. Big all, all over the world. But yeah, I mean, when he was, he's, some of the stuff he said about like, hey, you know, I, I do think that the Russians are probably pretty shit drivers on, <laughs> uh, you know, on balance. But that's because of the, the, everyone's, every car seems to come with a, a bloody a, a road traffic camera at the front of it. And you're like, <laughs> so speaking of which, that's another, so I've been rear-ended twice in the last month. In a car. In a car. We should clarify yeah. that. In a car. Yeah. Um, one was my fault. One wasn't. So the guy who was my fault paid for the one who wasn't, so I'm break even. <laughs> and you've had two great experiences in the, in the, in the middle two of Two incredible that. experiences. It's, you know what it is? As soon as you feel that impact, the sense, the sense is, it's not like, ah, I'm an, it's, it's just all of the admin flashes before you <laughs> All of the like, oh like my a God, bright the, light. the paperwork. Oh. <laughs> like, it, it's so... <laughs> It's such it, that's way more painful than any whiplash could could do because you're like there is certainly something afoot here. There's I, I think things I'd, come in clusters like I, that. Well, I, I'd love to know. So I have a theory that people with dash cams get in more accidents than people without dash cams. So ironically, my dash cam I got a crap one and it didn't record when it actually <laughs> needed to work. So got re-rendered the first time. Tried to take my dash cam out, plug it into the computer. And it records like 30 second clips of journeys that I've done five years ago. <laughs> and nothing, nothing about the, the accident that I've had. 
And then because it was still at home, I was trying to get the footage from it. And I got it wasn't the second time. It did when you got oh, in the second God. time. So I'm just going to get rid of it and buy a dual facing one because you think like yeah. most. Well, hang on, did you just have one facing in one direction? Just a front facing. Okay, yeah. So to I mean, get a dual facing one that connects to your phone or Wi Fi is almost impossible. Really? <laughs> yeah, the reviews... Gap in the market. Someone who has access to small portable video cameras. Does it just record onto a hard drive and then reset, reset, So it records reset. on loop, yeah. And then it has... Some of them have a sensor. So if you if it has an impact, it will save the last mm. That's clever. 10 minutes. So I mean, a lot of the... Like stuff like Canary is... I think it's 28 days that it records on cloud. <clears> and then after 28 days, it'll just... I don't know what Canary is. Home security. Yeah, home, like oh, same as Nest or whatever, right. whatever. Um, speaking of which, Darren got a Nest. I think I've told you this before. Mm. He got a Nest, which is like a smart uh, thermostat for your house. And because he's him and his wife have got a young child and dogs and he has a chaotic working environment, like there's no continu... Sorry. <laughs> is that... I mean, vibrating phone during a podcast is... Is that... Is uh, that what do you want me to do? <laughs> is it... Well, like, turn it on silent. That's on silent? <laughs> but it vibrates? Yeah. Is that what happens at night? Uh, yeah. That's disgusting. It's only good things, I've told you. That's disgusting. I don't like... Who doesn't like mind being woken up by a really good thing? That is a story that... I, I don't know whether we've mentioned this, where I came to pick Johnny up at 7am for a competition. We were going to Leeds. I think we are spoken about it, but... Oh, okay. Go on, go on. Go went, on. To, went to his family home, knocked on his door. This was a few years ago. Mum answered the door, and uh, she, I was like, have you seen Johnny? She was like, no, I've not, I've not seen him. I don't know where he is. And I just hear footsteps running down Fuck. the stairs. <laughs> Johnny's like... Oh, like bleary eyed like what time is it it's like it's 7.25 like oh god and he was like right you know what's happened my Apple Watch at 4am woke me up and just said beep beep you've been sat down too long time to get up <laughs> so I so I got up and like and then my girlfriend was like what are you doing Johnny <laughs> are you trying it's, it's four in the morning and I was like oh. and so <laughs> went, <laughs> <"It's a normal laughs> so he went back to sleep and then it didn't wake him up when, the, when, you, when you actually needed yeah. it. This is when we try and optimise too hard. Like, yeah. So th- there was a good tweet that Jordan put out yesterday, that um, uh, George put out yesterday, saying about asymmetric risks. And one of the biggest... Is asymmetric- that who it was? Yeah. Right. Well, is Naval it- Ravikant via George. Oh, got it. Okay. But it wasn't Naval, was it? It was Naval Ravikant bot, which is owned by George. <laughs> if you are on Twitter, check out <laughs> Naval. It's so isn't it? Uh, it's Naval bot, N A V A L. BOT and it's just like uh, aphorisms that are unbelievable on on loop. Um, one of the biggest, I think, one of the biggest asymmetrical risks is single alarm clock. It's dangerous, man. Yeah, like having, one day when it fails. Yeah, that's the day that you really, really need it. Yeah, so by so it's asymmetric risks and asymmetric benefits opportunity opportunity so in other words the size of the gain is smaller than the risk yeah the so size of the risk is smaller than the entering cost. a position with a small stop loss and a very very large take profit so are, they, are the opportunities yeah yeah so, so what's it, the what's the other one um that has a, a small a massive, upside small upside massive downside so, so for, for the me, texting what, while driving yeah is the texting standard. texting while driving texting another uh person while you're in a relationship is another one. Like, you're right. going to get a very limited upside benefit to that. Or doing naughty text with another yeah. person. Yeah. Was, was it you that said, like, if you would, if you had to show the text that you were writing while driving in court? Ben. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And, it, like, let's say you had a crash or you killed someone, you hit a pedestrian, and then in court, they're like, well, what text were you writing? And you're like, mm. lol, or, like, just some... It's so fucking like, vapid oh. shit. Yeah, it, it, it is. The trouble is... It, when you're next in the car, watch how many people coming the other way are looking at the road. So few people. Yeah. And then you think, if they veer off, what am I going to do? So with automated car, uh, what's it called, self-driving cars, apparently there's like a there's like a hundred or a thousand fold less risk to die by a self-driving car than it is to mm-hmm. die. From so it, this, it, is, it, this, is what, this is, but people prefer to be. Um, they're, like they're scared of self-driving cars because they would prefer to die by their own hand even if it's a hundred or a thousand times me, more me and you both quote tweeted the same thing that we would uh, prefer to die by our own volition than live at the behest of a machine unbelievable mm. you like so I suppose it's when it's when the machine goes wrong it's the but, destroying a planet to make paperclip scenario isn't it it's, so the problem the problem that people have with it is that for some reason they're prepared with a huge amount of uh, real risk that comes from humans a huge amount of human risk 
but this tiny, and then they obsess about, well, what if it's a mother of three versus a, a pram with a baby? Mm. And you're like, like when is that ever going to happen? F- well, even if, even <laughs> I'm, if it I'm does, like, like, how do you make that decision? Yeah, okay, so it's a utilitarian. It's somehow better to leave that decision in the hands of a human who's just going to be like, oh, yeah, and and kill them both. <laughs> uh, crash in a <laughs> shop and kill 10 people. Yeah. <laughs> I'd let, just let Tesla just make a like a judge value right. cost of life and just make the best decision. Yeah, outsource, that's all you can do. Outsource anyway, everything to Elon Musk. Yeah, um, I'll tell you what else I've been listening to recently: "The End of the World" with Josh Clark. That sounds cheery. Link will be in the show notes below. It is the most um, advanced and clever use of the podcast platform that I've listened to so far. So, if you can imagine a ten-episode podcast series where he is talking about different existential threats, um, as asteroids, AI risks, physics experiments, uh, all sorts, everything, very, very comprehensive. And the entire show has been engineered by very, very clever uh, sound engineers. And there's soundscapes going on in the background. So as he's talking about traveling through space, there's like whooshing space sounds and kind of low-level music and rumbling when he will talk about asteroids. It's going to be great on three times speed. <laughs> just white knuckling the steering wheel <laughs> so here's, here's the thing that is such a unique problem I, to have I don't listen to po- so I do listen to audiobooks on two times speed I listen to podcasts as they are really? I think I see a podcast as leisure le- leisure but an audiobook is like I'm reading this for work to oh, gain okay. information I'd, but you I, just see all audio as wasting your time how do I consume it as rapidly yeah. but to be honest three times pushes my limit a bit but because <laughs> it's like <laughs> you can't even get so the only way that you can get um, three times speed is by going out to specific kinds of apps so if even if Spe- you're it, hacked scone apps. if you're yeah. listening now on uh, Apple Podcasts I implore you to try this out if you press the multiplication thing it'll go 1 1.5 2 0.5 so oh really yeah. I'm using a new podcast app called Castro which is excellent but it only has like 1 1.2 1.5 up to 2 and then the next speed up is 3 <laughs> and 2 is too slow for me and 3 is a little bit too fast but it's like <laughs> would you like an egg <laughs> <laughs> or we are going to and it metastasizes <laughs> into bone cancer. How do I explain that? <laughs> so it was just in Iceland, you were listening to some really kind of droll guy talk about all the different ways that shin cancer can become cancer everything can else. Move. Yeah. So I, I was sat, my bedroom was the living room. So I was on the sofa and Yusuf was very unwell for the entire time. And I just could, I'd wake up to two mornings. The first morning I woke up to... Yusuf standing, wearing a woolen hat <laughs> and some shorts, <laughs> cooking on a portable hob in the corner of a room. That thing blew me away, by the way. The, that, the portable hob? Yeah. It's, yeah. A, it's, it's like a if you close a laptop and make it twice as thick. That's a hob. And it's a... Yeah, it's a hob. So it's how, how is it generating it? the heat? Unbelievable. Like, but, yeah, so... They just value space it's efficiency. It's slow, <laughs> slow proof. So Yusuf's like crouched over this hob with a pan, turns around and says, would you like an egg? Single egg, boiled egg. That was what he was offering me for my breakfast, which I declined, I believe. Really? So I think we only had three left, so it was just going to be egg <laughs> each. Egg each. Yeah. And then we bought some Lucky Charms, is that what yeah, they're called? We which were the cheapest cereal in Iceland. They were £9,400. Yeah. As opposed to £9.5. <laughs> there was a, grand, dis- which was there was a the, discount, yeah. Um, nine and a half grand to get into the supermarket, then nine and a half grand for... Should we talk about Five Festival again? I've already talked about it with Alex uh, Cortez, but it's just so good. It, did you watch this? I've on? seen it now, yeah. Have you? Yeah. Do you realise you watch it at normal speed? Normal speed. You were, on you and Ben's recommendation. Did you watch it with Amy? Yeah. Right. So I, I can only, <laughs> the, the only times I'm forced to watch things at normal speed are if there's other people. In the you room just gotta when you when you say something that doesn't fit into this is what Yusuf does. You have gotta find the the reason there's why. There's a justification. Like, is he unwell? Yeah. Or is it? Is he person? unwell? Yeah. <laughs> So um, one of my favourite, to segue before we go on Fire Festival, one of my favourite things is where you say you can have a £5 discount on massages that you give people. So you're a trained masseuse, <laughs> but you offer people a £5 discount if they allow you to listen to whatever podcast or audiobook you're listening to at the time. But obviously, if you flip that on its head, what you could look at is there is a £5 surcharge if you don't want to listen to what I'm listening to at the moment. <laughs> That's a good point. And five pounds is so 
arbitrary as well, isn't it? It's like it's it's enough that you'd probably sit and think like, oh, do I? Because like, also, someone will say yes. Because I remember uh, Gibbo saying he, he was having a, he was like, you said was giving me a massage. He was, Something about funnel marketing. Metastasizing <laughs> into really skin cancer. I understand it, but I, it was okay, I suppose. Something and he, about straddle options in the <laughs> Russian equity market. <laughs> it's actually, you should charge people for that. It's free content. Like, the stuff you've I, got I will access curate to. excellent yeah. educational content for you. Yeah. But a lot of it's paid. As like, it's either part of a nine grand a year degree not or a paid program. Or... That's, that's a good point, actually. Like, it is value adding. Yeah. In, but it's just very specific. They recognize the value. Yeah. Not if you're on LSEND. Not if you're on LSEND, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then to, to bookend that conversation, when uh, you've finally got onto the life hack of getting your hair cut at home, haven't you? Yeah, I have. Thank you. Um, but Excellent before, before the hairdresser went round to his, she mm. texted me to say, like, hang on a second, I'm about to go around to this person's house that I've never met before. I probably should think about my own safety. Is he, is he a weirdo? And I'm like... Haven't <laughs> 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 you said, like, no more than I am? Yeah. That, that doesn't really the, say the, much. The, the, if the canary in the coal mine is me, like, there's probably... But, and then apparently... So I knew that this was going to be... I could foresee the Scobie problem occurring... Like, Which was he's, that he's not a touchy kind of no, um, but tie you up weirdo. Yeah. He's just uh, it's what you listen to, to make you feel uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> what I had in my head, and I knew it was going to happen, and sure enough, it did. Was that Yusuf was going to be sat down, and he would be forced to make small talk with someone in his house, but he would know that at that point, all that he needed to do would be like press the play button. <laughs> but but the, there's too many, you know, like that as your on ramp, like mm. introduction, Yusuf one hundred and one. Like, you can't have Yusuf 101 as... Well, that, that's it. Oh, God, you know... <laughs> and I messaged her the next day, and I was like, did he um, did he make, did he he make play anything? And then she was like, no, no. I was like, fucking no, hell. I did. So, so I, I gave her a 10-minute grace period <laughs> of small talk, and then I was like, right, I think we've reached the threshold of, like, I've established that I am a... No, I, that I can pretend to be a normal enough human for 10 minutes. <laughs> Hey, do you? I'm just listening to the middle of a podcast. Can I? And I was like, you know what? I'll be nice. Let's put the speed to a normal. I think I put it on like 1.2 and hope she wouldn't notice. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a, it was um, Stan Groff talking about like the the psychoanalytic map of human consciousness. Oh, oh, I'm God. sure that she loved that. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> Like she spends all day hearing to people he- hearing people talk about Reveal magazine. Mm. Fair, well, to be fair, it's quite a yeah. It was like the cartography of archetypes of um, <laughs> Jesus Christ, Jungian architecture. Yeah. It was very- so fire festival. Tell me what you think because I'm absolutely fucking amazed <clears throat> to find out what you you thought about it. So for anyone that doesn't know, I suppose fire was a really impressively. Um, it was a, a festival. It was an app. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it start, started off as an app and then they decided to launch a festival off the back of it. Very good at hype. They hired a lot of uh, supermodels and high high definition, like high production value stuff to go and film the promo for a festival out in the Bahamas, buying one of uh, Pablo Escobar's old <laughs> islands. And they were going to host it there. So they said. Yeah. And so they, they made it look like an amazing experience got a lot of high profile people like, a bit weird like blink 182 and jar rule like all like <laughs> captains of 1996 um <laughs> and and so they then but, Do you know it's amazing that you would have looked at that lineup and gone i've heard of them <laughs> what the fuck sounds all right that sounds okay i think i'll book my ticket oh, yeah. it's 10, pounds. Some 41 yeah. i've heard of those people <laughs> um so the, 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 obviously, it all fell down when they actually went to implement it and realised that the island had no infrastructure, the organisation was a complete mess, and just seeing the whole thing progressively fall apart. The way that the documentary is made is so impressively stressful as well. Did yeah. you find this where, like, you sat there and you're like, oh... Well, my, my empathy uh, as a business person just had me... Like, I was white knuckling I was thinking it's right up your street because it's like yeah well I mean for any any of the club promoters that are listening it is just it's all of our worst nightmares rolled into one at what point could you tell that it was going to go wrong game over I realised like the whole premise of the show pretty pretty soon I think like as soon as they talk because it's the stuff that you don't think about the the infrastructure of things like bio waste disposal like the problem wasn't selling the events getting rid of poo 
Where do you put the poo? You're like on an island. $100,000 worth of Evian water that the ops Help. director had to go and suck off the customs officer. <laughs> and I turned up there fully prepared <laughs> to suck his dick. And you're like... He got loads of positive... He's a legend. Oh, uh, yeah. Do you know what the other thing is? Well, there's, there's, either way, couldn't you? <laughs> yeah, it's true. Um, but, so, yeah, I mean... <laughs> people be like, it's a bit weird, mate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, I thought it was it was really really. I've watched it twice now. That's how much I enjoy. I felt very sorry for him. I might watch it again. Billy McFarland. No, no, I felt very sorry for the the, the dick sucking man. It, it's that's really arrogant of him because basically the customs officer held was a hundred thousand liters, a hundred thousand dollars worth. I think it was like three articulated lorries worth. Okay, so hundred forty thousand dollar customs charge, and the guy said that he was going to go over because the customs officer was gay and try and seduce him. And no, no, no. The, everyone told him that this is what he had to do. This is what he had to do. Yeah, so, so he was, like, commandeered as, like, you're the highest profile gay man that we've got. Like, you'll it, put a dick in your still, mouth. It's so arrogant to think, like, I like for me to give someone a blowjob, it's worth $140,000. Like, it's, I suppose it's just all you've got at that point, isn't it? Mm. Like, it's either who, that or... What would you have done? If it was the other way around, who would pay that much? I don't think anyone's ever paid $140,000 in Can the world. Can have to be a good blood They job definitely will have done. Do you, absolutely. 140 grand? Yeah. Why not? Because you just find someone that would be willing to take 139. Like, <laughs> do, do I don't think the person in the in the moment of the transaction is that being quoted 140 grand and thinking... Mm, How's he paid it? Stripe. <laughs> oh, no, 2.9% charge. The would be sickening. <laughs> but if you absorb that, if you absorb that as the as the vendor... You'd be like, for 140 grand blowjob. Are, are you a registered feet. business? You could claim VAT back on the uh, transaction. And yeah, you can. Oh, no, I don't think you could. What's the, what's the, what's the input VAT? Um. There is none. <laughs> it's a nightmare. It is. It's a, an absolute nightmare. It's fucking perilous, isn't 140 it? 140 grand blowjob. Um, but yeah, I mean, one of, the, one of the main things, I said this to Alex on the, on the podcast, was that <clears throat> the big difference, and this shows how seduced we are by success, the only reason that everyone slates that the guy that ran it and the festival itself is because it failed. Mm-hmm. And if the stars had aligned sufficiently correctly and a bunch of very lucky things, the water had got sorted and the tents had got sorted and it wasn't that weekend where all of the yachts were there and the, and the, the islands. And yeah, and it hadn't rained and this and the other. A bunch of things, basically his preparation and skill level and virtue and integrity hadn't moved at all on the meter but all of the luck was turned up to 11 mm. and it all worked fine so if it was we, still fraudulently gaining oh yeah, like, oh, yeah, yeah capital yeah. and all yeah. that stuff but things had been just, successful we'd be hailing him as the fucking yeah and it's purely because we are so seduced by success mm, we want to be attached to success so much that it is by any means possible so i think it's i think he's a pretty smart bloke so uh, six, not, six years in jail now, is it? Was yeah. It, yeah. Not that smart. So, but obviously, yes, that, that part's not smart. But like, I think the, like, I, I, there are not very many people who could get something to that point. Did you trust him? Did you think he was a charismatic guy? No, I didn't. No, you don't trust him. I don't think. Yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't I thought come across at all as trustworthy. He seemed. Yeah, he's got something weird about. It. Even as like he's got a strange gait when he walks. It's smarmy. And, and it's bit, yeah. You know, he's obviously got some sociopathic kind of like mm. detachment tendencies because uh, his facial expressions looked as if they were engineered like do you know what I mean as if he'd like thought how can I like he was meta he was metacognizant for the entire time that he was do you know what I mean like he was thinking like what would Billy McFarlane say in this in this moment uh, yeah and apparently there's a Hulu version which I'm yet to watch there's a, a same thing but different documentary and the Hulu version focuses a lot more on him Right, um, which I'm looking forward to watching. And apparently, in that, there's a bit some footage from when he's in court. Is this fucking crazy American system where you can just like take a camera in a court, and, like just really? wa- yeah. watch what's going on? Um, and yeah, apparently, there's this bit where they say, basically, did you say this? He says no, and they say his video of you saying that you did say it, and you can see apparently the co- like he's. <laughs> There's like a cognitive dissonance of just, yeah, where he's like, hang on a second. Like I did, but I didn't, but I did, but I, and you're like, hang on. It's obvious that he's just got, he's a compulsive liar Liar. who is unable to reconcile a number of different things that happen. If if you look at what he, I I know he didn't, so he didn't deliver on the, on the product, but the, the (laughs) The prep was very good. Someone's made a fucking documentary about him. Yeah. And so you think like everyone's very quick to criticize and I completely understand that. But the, the fact is, 
he made a he made a big wave out of an idea. You need to, you need to just put him in the marketing department and have him just very think confined. Of, think of stuff. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Like, don't let him near the ops. Like, don't let him fucking <laughs> order the coffee. Like, but even stuff like getting everyone to post an orange tile. Yeah, I thought that mm. was so clever. It's a very good idea. Like, just keep him like cordoned off. Yeah, give safe, him a room, safe room, and a whiteboard. Nick, and Nick can stay in there, mate. And a camera, he can just do what he yeah. wants. Yeah. yeah. So, do you think he was delusional or deceptive? Combination, because the I don't think that you can have that degree. I, I don't think there's any amount of deception which would allow you to continue something when it's obvious it's not. Well, going so to when work. things were going wrong, and he was like, "Guys, we, we can't think about that. We've got to be positive." We're a solutions-based business, not yeah. a problems-based business. So is mm. that just like? blind faith in his own ability and thinking no no we've got to be positive about this like just as Tony Robbins this up as hard as we can or is it like he knows that it's going wrong but like just doesn't want he's holding on to it position. probably switched so I imagine he didn't start off thinking let's make this big scam oh, I imagine yeah. he started off thinking this is going to work and look, you know when that guy like prices it all up and says <laughs> mate this is like 30 million quid or over whatever. budget yeah and, and we've, you've got six weeks to do it in it's normally done in six months yeah at that point 12 it's months, like I think they said. really yeah, yeah. Start doing it at that point it's like fucking hell like I either shit I'll get off the pot here like I, I better just go balls in with this yeah and just hope it works the thing, the thing that was most <laughs> impressive for me was where they were saying so we'd run out of money and then Billy would jump on a jet go back to New York and then he'd come back with another three million dollars in his pocket, and you'd be like, "Billy, what the fuck?" He's That's it's him. Impressive. He's sucking. He's sucking like whatever thirty thirty cocks. That's what he's saying. Do you think that's what he was doing? 30, <laughs> 30 times one forty minus handling Easy. fee minus uh, I see. I see. tax. So, right. <laughs> I don't think that's really what he was doing. No, no, but um, but he was just lying about his finances, wasn't he, to get the get the funding. Do you see that he said he, he, he held he held a number of uh, Facebook options, and he had like oh, ten really? grand. <laughs> he let off, oh like, yeah, like, I remember that. Like five. Oh, grand. God, yeah. Because his previous business was like he sold it for a really small, yeah, small amount. But Cause it almost it felt to me like a somewhat someone with a gambling problem. Yeah, mm. like he, he loves the thrill of it and doesn't want the idea to die. Some cost, some cost. So it's like, oh well, I'll just I'll just tell that lie and I'll just lie as well. And I'll, it'll all work out in the end somehow. Like what? the one turn of the wheel, I'll eventually play my favourite. Needs, to, needs to read Sam Harris. That's what he needs mm-hmm. to do. What's that called? Where you the the Chinese um, thing where they they make you take incremental commitments that are slightly on off your moral radar, but because they're so small, you keep taking larger and larger ones until you're just deep down the hole, and then you sounds you like make, Darren Brown. Darren Brown documentary. It, uh, well, yeah, it does yeah. sound like a day show. It's not Darren <laughs> Brown. I think Darren Brown probably leverages that particular process thing. very much. Yeah. It's the it's the reverse of compounding interest, isn't it? It's like a number of small <laughs> compounding bad decisions. And before you know it, you like strung up by your nipples in Russia somewhere. <laughs> but it just seems fine because it was only one extra decision yeah. away from yeah. one nipple. Each and time. Both nipples. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Have you seen the, the Ted Bundy tapes yet, yeah. Johnny? No. Have you seen it? Yeah. Oh, it's my God. <laughs> you have seen something that you've so not I, seen. I, nearly, I started watching it, but I was like, oh. I'm pretty fucking good. Serious. Is it good? Yeah, I thought it was pretty good. Great. Yeah. It's exciting. He's just, he's just a very charismatic, good-looking guy that... Happens to be a systemically, killer. systemically yeah. naughty. Although the, there is still a divide between, I think, the person that he thinks he is and wants to try and be. Very right. much like the Billy thing, actually. It's quite quite scary. There's a lot so, of... That's, what, that's where my mind... There's right. another one that James Bailey recommended me to watch, yep. which I've seen, called Abducted in Plain Sight. So I've watched that. That's Did fucking you? weird. It, oh, oh, Christ. <laughs> you should watch that. Is Maddie McCann on it? No, it's similar. No, no, no. Oh, okay. oh my god! Like, <laughs> why? <laughs> Give us a synopsis. So that that's uh, the, out of the three shows that you've mentioned, that's easily the and it gets the, the best. So mental. I was just, mental. I stood up to get a drink. Right, I'm walking walking to the fridge, and someone says something, and I turned around and went. Yeah, I was like, I can't believe. Should we spoil it for for the audience? I, no, I don't spoil should. it. Don't spoil it. Well, so I mean, there's there's a scene where a guy. There's two men in a car. Yeah. Who, do you know the bit I'm about to say? Yeah, but I, I feel like the, the preamble right. is, is the most, like, like what led to that point is makes it seem even more ridiculous. Okay, I'm not, I'll Shall not I, say. Uh, okay, well, so, <laughs> basically, go. it's a family, three daughters. They made friends with another family. The husband of the other family developed a, they developed a friendship, and he developed a particular proclivity for one of the daughters, Jan. He would 
the parents were aware of it and they were like, oh yeah, it kind of angered us, but we thought, you know, whatever, carried on. And then he would end up staying over at their house multiple times, staying in Jan's bed. One day, the father was away, wasn't able to take Jan to horse riding class. He said, oh, I'll do it. Drugged her, took her away, abducted her for several days. The parents didn't call the police or the FBI until five days later because they were like, oh, maybe they're just you know, horse riding or something. And That's the tip of the iceberg. It's the tip of the iceberg. Tip of the iceberg. <laughs> and, and so then, um, and, and prior to that as well, what it turned out was that the man had made sexual advances towards the wife of the other family. And so they had a little secret that, so she felt hesitant to actually go to the authorities about. And then later, the husband and this other guy had gone on a camping trip and the husband was like, and we were sat in the van and he, he looked over at me and he had an erection. He was like, man, I just need some relief. Would he help me out? Would he help brother out? And I was like, so I, I performed an act of, masturbation on, and, and, and you're just like and you're like what, what the <laughs> fuck is going so, so he's managed to like have sex with both of the parents from the yeah. other thing and abduct the child <laughs> and then tried to marry it but eventually it he manages to return the child back to the house with the receipt does he have proof of purchase proof of purchase they they don't speak to him for a few weeks and then he becomes mates with them again stays back at a house over and abducts her a second time <laughs> And and when, when when he's abducted her a second time, the parents then know that this happened and they know that he's had previous convictions of being a child abductor. But he said to them, oh, don't worry, I'm recovered now, but part of my therapy is to stay in the bed with little girls. And the parents are like, oh, sounds legit. Okay. Um, and that's- they, they let him stay in the bed. There's a bit where it's like he was sleeping in her room five nights of every seven in her bed, in For her like parents' six house. six months. And you're like... But it's a very similar thing where are the parents completely the, the deranged. Parent, well, no. Again, this is one of these questions: where are they delusional? Are they complicit? Again, it starts they... off with, "Oh, I just wanted to take a horse riding once," and then very quickly becomes this mess of just. It makes you so angry at the parents. Yeah, yeah. It's just like complete neglect. It's great mm-hmm. that you're watching these things. I've just it been really steamrolled is. into watching. But things it's on it's stuff these that. Days. I, I feel like regular TV is brain dead, pointless. But stuff like this is really interesting. It's Especially surely it must be it must be as palatable as you can make television. Yeah, <laughs> it is. It's it just it's, it's a, quite like, a complex plot. There's quite a lot of information. Big mixture of emotions. Yeah, because yeah. the thing is as well, like no one ever has this conversation about Coronation Street. <laughs> like, e did you see the, yeah. the, the, the complexities of the metacognition of Roy Cropper? <laughs> and you're like, no, well, no. Because yeah. it's all just... Can, can so, so funny enough, there would be no Coronation Street plot that even came close to the the ridiculousness of <laughs> and, this. And that's real. <laughs> yeah, and this actually happened. That is true. You couldn't make this stuff up. You couldn't. Uh, what else? he making a murderer? Liam Neeson. Uh, Liam Neeson. I saw one thing of it and then I was like... So CBA. I think if you, if you stuck with that... You persevere. It's a very similar thing where it gets to the end and you're like, uh, I can't okay. believe this has happened. Have you watched the second season? No. Second season's not as good, but just... Like, the first season spanned 20 years, right? Mm. Pretty much of timeline. Yeah, yeah. The second one spanned since then until now. So it's right, like, right. They, they're going to have to chance. stretch this. But they've got... There's a the lady lawyer who is representing him. Right. Is oh yeah, she do. She does pro motherfucker. motherfucker. Yeah, an absolute like mm. proper. She wheel wheeling the big mini gun and just <laughs> oh, pointing it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and when the noise is so uniform, it sounds like a single hum. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The That's um, it. there's another one called the staircase. Have you seen that? No. It's about a guy who gets a guy's in the house with his wife, and his wife dies by falling down the stairs, and the police arrive, but there's like blood all down the stairs like smeared everywhere and he's like she just fell down the stairs is it in the UK? no it's in the US and he's a famous author mm. fiction no it's it's proper Shit. like police tapes and stuff and people are like and we came to the house and she's in a right mess like she's <laughs> blood everywhere like all this, like all up the wall and everything and he's like yeah, yeah she just must have fallen down the stairs <laughs> and it's, that's great as There'll well will be this camera footage that vindicates her where she just absolutely stacks it. <laughs> <laughs> like, she's, she's like, see, I told you. I told you all she's this. a bloody klutz. Reminds me of this video. It went, went viral a few years ago of this guy who breaks up with his wife. Do you know about this? Where he, he creates like a trail, like a Valentine's oh, trail. Oh, shit, thing. yes. Have you seen it? He's, no, no. Oh. It's, the, it's really savage. I'll try and find it and link it in the show notes below. Yeah, it's like a, a 
a incremental set of videos, this guy finds out his wife's been cheating, then leads her on this like Valentine's Day uh, scavenger hunt thing through the house to the bed, and the bed's covered in roses. And it's uh, at so, the end of it. So there's like a card and it's shaped like a heart and she has to go around and find the different things and there's a clue written on each thing and she eats a chocolate and she gets up to the bed and it's like, um, we will, uh, we, this is the final stage of, of our little trail. Um, we will then spend the next the next time at Northern Lights in the hail. Um, I finally have one more question for you when I get one on, down on one knee and ask you, who the fuck is Thomas Rue? <laughs> <laughs> and she looks up and, and, and he's just like, see you later. And he, and he, he locks the door, puts the key through the door. And he's like, that's just proof so that the police know that I haven't got a key anymore. And he drives off into the night singing into her dildo. Um, <laughs> oh my God. Just films himself. And like the whole time, there's a lot of like excitement in his voice, but you can hear the tone of sadness underneath mm. where he's just like... You, that's the way to deal with it, though. And, like, he's British as well, isn't he? Yeah. Like, the guy, he's, like, from, yeah, he's, like, just Yorkshire or, or Leeds or something like that. And the guy, <laughs> so Leeds, it, it's it? very realistic. And it's all filmed in, like, 916 vertical. Oh, <laughs> like, right. On, so like, a front-facing camera. From all right, like darling, a, read, read clue number four. And yeah. then, okay, over to the next one. And you've got, and it's, like, yeah. he's put, like, sparkles and glitter on you the car. Like he's had, like, a psychotic event when he's found out about it. He's, <laughs> like, masterminded this real... Just Situation. accessed another level of cognition because he's been so hurt by it. Yeah. And he, he, driving off with her dildo, like it's the final level of thought. Of yeah, like, oh, sure, yeah sure, sure. that's actualization, isn't it? Actualization, that's self actualization, like the dildo. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like Maslow's hierarchy of needs, and then at the very, very top, it's just on the top, is the tip of the dildo. Tip of the dildo. Yeah, uh, Liam Neeson, we we're going to talk about Liam yeah. Neeson. This is a fucking minefield for us to. Mm. So, can we get some background on? on So, um, for the people who don't know, Liam Neeson has has a very particular set of skills. Yes, he does. Well, he he does, and that's the issue. Um, Liam Neeson. No. That's the first sound video guy Dean's ever made, but he's not in the room. Um, So, (laughs) Liam Neeson uh, is promoting a new film, which I think is actually a dark comedy. I don't think it's actually an action film. It's a dark comedy about revenge and. During an interview, he is asked, how do you understand the emotions that are going through this? And in his very sort of dark, slow, uh, gravelly kind of way, Irish voice, he says, well, uh, I have a personal experience with this. A close friend of mine was raped and I asked her, did she know the person? And she said no. And I said what ethnicity was she? And she said it was a black man. So for the next few nights, I went out with a kosh, which is like a small baton, (laughs) walking the streets of Ireland in black neighbourhoods, looking for a black man to start on me so that I could kill him. And after a little bit of time, I sort of caught myself and a lot of the emotions had drained a little and I was able to be shocked at my own degree of behaviour. Nothing had occurred, but that's how I'm able to embody or understand this particular degree of revenge. He all, he talks about the shame that he felt on himself and oh. said, I realised that even this, this was me feeling this in the context of living in Northern Ireland and um, seeing all of the, the atrocities that are, that are done and yet still having falling prey to that same thought loop and then realising that actually I'm just as bad as them. And, and then, yeah, so I guess... He said he had that thought 40 years ago, was it? Yeah. And so people were slating him now. They called him a racist. For having a thought 40 years ago mm. that he's well, recognised he, he, he acted on it. He did, did act on it, yeah. Well, yeah, I suppose. Yeah. I suppose to no consequence. Similar to as you said about the fire thing where like nothing was... Nothing, nothing happened, happened yeah. No... Well, I mean, so the the thing that's... So do you see John ba- John Barnes, the footballer... Oh, stuck up for him. ...has come out saying yeah. he's a hero. And you're like, yeah. I mean, fair enough, John Barnes. Not the first person I'd think of to call on. No, I know. Very, very peculiar, that, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. You know, like, Where's that connection? Do you know if Liam needed to call on someone of, like, a, a <laughs> black heritage, you wouldn't be like, yeah, I'm going <laughs> to ring John Barnes. Like, you, you'd have thought, like, you'd Denzel. That. You know Denzel? I bet you know yeah, Denzel. Yeah, you would ring Denzel. Very similar guys, aren't they? Yeah. Like, de- like equaliser Denzel type. sort him out, wouldn't he? Ainsley Harriet. What? Like, <laughs> what what gravitas does Ainsley Harriet bring oh, to the conversation other than being black? 
<laughs> is it is a lunatic? Yeah. Is Ainsley ha- and it's not Ainsley Harriet that does yeah, the out, adverts for the travel down. lodge, is it? Give it good old rub. Get out and suck around. That. Down, down. Chris, <laughs> <laughs> that's Lenny Harriet yes. Harry, isn't it? I mean, that's a smidge racist. Well, no, the the two similar aged British black like <laughs> per- TV personalities. Okay. <laughs> 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 I think no, I think it's actually because um, Lenny Henry has a routine where he was approached by a certain media company saying, "Can can you do this gig for us?" And it slowly transpired that <laughs> they thought was... he was Ainsley Harriet. <laughs> Is that so, true? Yeah. So it, I think it's one of the routines that one, one of them has anyway. Okay. So um, have you seen all of the Ainsley Harriet videos where he's people have like really taken it seriously? They've gone full video guy Dean on it and edited him down it's to look like it's a quite scary. Crew. They put like seen horror them? music no. over the top, oh, and God. They, like, it's like Easy Harriet on the top of a on the top of a cliff going. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Why is he doing and that? And then he's like whisking this thing for ages, and slowed getting, down, and, and like, getting, getting, getting yeah. <laughs> and then he's rubbing meat, and just like, give you a good old rub, good old rub. And there's a whole like it's a very harrowing movement on of, YouTube of this stuff. Jesus, it'll be on Reddit or Four Chan. It will, yeah, something like that. Honestly, I love how the internet does that. It just rolls with something. It's just, yeah. Probably, and he'll, is, he'll have no idea why. Yeah. So yeah, Liam Neeson and then John Barnes and there's there's been a, a he's been the subject of a, an awful lot of derision for it, I suppose. Mm. Which is mad because you are right. Like it was forty years ago. It was something. the The main question is: Can someone be held accountable for thoughts that they have? Because you are right. That's essentially all that happened. Mm. And the argument is, well, if it had been a uh, Irish man or if it had been a Swiss person or a German or a yeah. Asian or whatever it is, the, the racism wasn't racism. It wasn't racism against people of black heritage. It was tribalism against anyone from the tribe of people he, who he clarified attacked this his later friend. as well, didn't he? He said, I was just looking for a symbol of my anger that I could... Mm-hmm. It was an avatar, on. right? Yeah. He was looking for someone to outlet that aggression onto. And Sam Harris and Joe... Uh, Joe Rogan said, like, hit the nail on the head. And they were like, if you want people in the world to be able to learn from others' mistakes, like that situation, you're not going to get much more perfect than this is a learning opportunity for everybody to understand someone who has everything to lose talking about a situation like this. Mm -hmm. So Liam Neeson, with all of his qualities and virtues that everyone admires him for being this amazing actor and looking so cool and, you know, like he's, He's everyone's perfect uncle, isn't he, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you're like, and this guy has had the bravery to come out and even he, as talented and famous as he is, is still falls prey to these kind of mm. juvenile... Like, like, I suppose it's primal. Should he, should he not have thought it or should he not have said that he thought it? Because those are the only two things that have happened and people are criticising him. So I'm sure most people have had a dark thought at some point in and so life. for the lesson is here that you're not allowed that if you have a dark thought like that you can't never, tell never about talk about it, it yeah as, as if that's the solution and, uh, he got the he got the cosh out and he walked out with it mm. so it's more than a dark thought isn't it that's what everyone's going to okay. say okay okay so suppose it's that's an action of someone in a very emotional very he's very upset very angry mm-hmm. taking a step towards acting on something mm. but caught himself before he did it mm-hmm but it's still better than acting on it. Well, definitely, yeah. So it is a difficult one, though. I, but I we, see that. You know, th- there are people, especially the, the, the thought police kind of people that try and jump mm. on things like this, they are under this illusion or lie that they don't have prejudices, as if as if they're somehow these, like, beacons of... It's like everyone has prejudices. The, the data shows that, like, so fat people is a particular example, that the data shows that people who look at photos of fat people on average will rate them as less intelligent and um, less charismatic or less likable. And there's certain qualities that, or lazy. Yeah. They say lazy, well. smelly, all those sorts of things. Like they just associate it with lack of discipline, I think, don't they? And what that feeds into. And so that, you know, there, there's, there would be similar ones with, with all kinds of minorities or, or groups of people, but well, to any just, characteristic. Yeah, any characteristic. You, someone who's got curly hair, someone who's tall, someone who's mm. short. And actually, you have to be able to discriminate to be able to navigate your way in the world. So it's not as if um, if you just eliminate all of that. <laughs> people be like, oh, I'm blind to colour or I'm blind to whatever. It's like, that's not... You're not a very effective, it's, it's, it's effective actor there, are you? Yeah, it's... 
Well, it's, it's just not possible. Like you, you know, this is. Uh... It's it's the same about people who. <coughs> I remember the reason I watched the fire documentary was my like Instagram social media like lights up with everyone's got an opinion on why he was shit, but like you don't know you. It's easy to just look at him, look at a guy who's like tried to make something fantastic and it's gone down the shit and he, he really made a mess of it in lots of ways. Mm-hmm. But like at one point, it started off as a great idea and a brilliantly executed idea that might have been fantastic. Mm-hmm. And no one knows how they would have reacted in his situation when they were faced with this. Like, fucking hell, like I've taken this too far. Mm-hmm. It's very easy but to sit from the armchair and be yeah. like, oh, Well, actually, most, most people couldn't even get anything to that point. <laughs> I, another, so, scene, another scene from the Fire Festival documentary is coming in my head, which is Ja Rule sat on that Google Hangout with everyone, <laughs> everyone in the room. And he's going like, fucking hell, guys. Like, you know, we don't need to worry, yeah? Like, like nobody died. And you're like, okay. Like, yes, yeah. you're right. Nobody died. And what's the example that he uses? I remember watching that and thinking, like, that it could have been quite likely people could have died or that. Yeah, like, yeah, he uses yeah. an example of, like, some company that came back from the... Oh, oh yeah, from yeah. the brink, and was like, like, look, they Wood, they Woodstock. came. Uh, no, that was one of the examples that was used. That was used by the other guy, wasn't it? But it's like you know, like uh, oh, it's uh, Samsung. It's like oh, Samsung, you oh, know, they're blowing exploding. up phones in people's pockets. Like you know, we we're not killing anyone. You're like, right, yeah, maybe you're not fucking Samsung either, yeah. are you? They had quite a lot of reputation before yeah. the phone started. Oh, well, they didn't open up with a brand new phone that blew people's legs off. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen as well, you, you will have done, because you get on flights all the time to weddings, don't you? Constantly. Um, um, have you seen now that if you drop your phone in between the seats of a plane, you're not supposed to move your seat or try and get the phone yourself. You need to bing and wait for the, the man, attendant the to, come. to come. Why? Because their concern is if you have like a Samsung Galaxy Note 7 or whatever the fuck a it is, mistake and you move, you move your seat back, crack it. All right, and It'll the work. lithium battery goes that everyone's up in fossil. This is planes. why you shouldn't be allowed on a plane unless you've got an iPhone, <laughs> and everything would be much simpler because the people who've made bad decisions would be confined to the where they live. That is true. Well, You're going to get a lot of hate for that. Rory Rory Sutherland <laughs> says the same. He's like, you know, after a while, people don't care about clock speed or <laughs> megapixels yeah, yeah. for the for the front facing camera. After a while, they just want something that looks nice. Mm. And you're like, well, that's it. That's exactly why. So I... the fact that you have an iPhone and you have a MacBook is is that is the explanation of why it's a better decision. You are canary in the coal mine for. <laughs> but you you shop on features. You don't care about the fact like I do AirPods. Have this though, this is like okay. But Quite you, an old iPhone. If you were point. like the the Google Pixel or like whatever the mm. latest Samsung is, probably on a features per per pound basis is much better. That, that's not my criteria though. Yours so, is integration with existing. Yeah, it's it's like convenience, right? integration, and speed of of access for stuff, which right. is why Alfred is the closest thing to my heart that anything ever could. <laughs> Where's be. your hat? Uh, I've I've got oh. it for the the webinar. Um, Webby. George got me a lovely Christmas present, which is a, a cap that says "Make Alfred Great Again." It's um, so fucking good. They don't even have an affiliate scheme. Like Alfred, what are you doing? Uh, I well, would, well, if you don't know, if in touch with them, yeah, they just you, love it. you do know that if if ninety five to ninety eight percent of people who are listening won't know what Alfred is, and they're thinking this mm. fucking Alfred fella is good, isn't he? <laughs> he's, he's got yeah. a hat made about him. Sounds like a nice nice lad. Yeah, he's a he's a bloody good fella. I tell you what, if Liam Neeson had had Alfred, oh, he wouldn't have had these problems. He wouldn't have done it all. <laughs> <laughs> so why do you have? Why did you buy a MacBook rather than a PC? Because you didn't buy it because okay. you thought Al- Alfred exists. Yeah, I I didn't. But I think use a, anyone, use a PC for three minutes and it'll answer that question. So, so many people, like because where I used to work, everyone has PCs. And I, so this is, is that mandatory? As well. Yeah, it's, it's just what their systems run on. So, so we, we've both worked in companies where you're forced to use, to a, use a PC. Computer, and the but whole it, time you just... I feel like when you, you speak to it. someone who uses a PC, they think Mac's like, oh, I can't use it. There's no my computer. There's no... You know, no control panel. What do I that, do? That that onboarding process to learn to use a Mac is about thirty minutes, isn't mm. it? Like, I think that's the, such a weak excuse to say like, oh. <laughs> it is like using the the only comparison that I can make between having a MacBook and having anything else is actually no, I I've never used Linux or or no, like I, does I've it used Linux, but it's, I see that as like like, like stabilizers <clears throat> off, like really good if you can make it work, mm. or you just. It's not it's like ABC. So, so it, it used. To, I think about ten years ago, maybe fifteen years ago, you, if you had a bit of developing knowledge, you could 
really use Linux to your advantage and it was at the mm-hmm. forefront. Now Mac has even overtaken that and there are a lot of developers moving over to using Mac as a as a thing. Mm. Um, and the problem with PC is that because it's incumbent, because large banks and lo- mm. you know lots of there's lots of corporate use of Microsoft, even though it's terrible and even though there's so much problems with it, because the cost of Such a, switching everything over is so large. I don't know. I've just, never ever walked into Santander or like Lloyd's and looked behind and go, everyone's got the yeah, iMac. Pros. Yeah, yeah, it just no, doesn't happen. It's not, it's not happening. Some of that will be cost. Oh, yeah, big, big stuff. But processing power. It's, it's so ironic because like if, if they add up all, I mean, how let's say if you were to add up all the time that you spent waiting for a computer at, <laughs> at your old job, uh, um, like per day. Well, well not even how, that, the amount of times I had to repair my computer. Okay, so so the number of work hours that yeah. the like, total labor that's lost multiplied by all the employees of the company, it's got to go into the... Buy everyone a MacBook Pro. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's just, a it's like using a different machine. It's a different category of everything. Mm. Hey, have, you ever, have you ever played in a phone shop with a different phone that isn't an iPhone? Mm, not Horrible. for a long time. I just feel like, I know mean, obviously I'm biased, but I feel mm. like using it is more cumbersome in every way. Mm. I I would honestly love if if anyone's watching this on YouTube, and you have a a sincere objection to or some reason that we're overlooking as like to why, why should we use a Google superior. Pixel? Why should yeah. we use a Samsung Galaxy Note Seven or a I'm LG? Really, I'm, I'm all ears. Like I'd I'd be keen to switch if there's some convincing. So I think most to, the, most of the people that have said to me you should switch that it's on it's on either on price or because they don't like Apple. Mm-hmm. So like the, my reason, my reason not, for not buying not like a Samsung Apple. is not because I don't like Samsung. It's because I like Apple and what Apple make and everything just I talks actually to each want, other. And... I want to like Samsung. I want to like a PC. But You're just a contrarian. Well, if, it's better, well, <laughs> if it's much better, then, then great. Yeah. It's... So you're right. Like, but if you had to then buy a Samsung laptop to get the same connectivity, mm. you would have a worse experience than what you have now. The downstream mm. effects of changing that device are... AirPods don't work. Oh, iPod. God, they really have got us locked in. I, I, so that, iPad won't sync up. Like, laptops well, not going to sync up. Even things like, if we, we all went to a, a cafe and I had the lap, the password for the Wi-Fi and you two didn't press a button and you both got the password. Yeah. You know, so that that little things lovely. like that. Someone sat and thought, what's someone's life like with a MacBook? And then let's make it a little bit easier. Yeah. And that's what they do. It's, Apple fan so it's changed like, David's life. He he was staunchly one of these like oh, yeah, I hate PC. Apple. I'm yeah. not paying three hundred quid for a laptop. It was a second hand refurbished Apple MacBook. I was like, that's honestly <laughs> that's David. A steal. Steal. Fucking deal of yeah. the century. And he was like, no, no, no. And I was like, look, just bite the bullet. Do it. I had, I had to bully him into buying one. He eventually did. And now like, after a couple of weeks of his ego kind of, hmm. so he's been like, you know what, Yusuf? Yeah. Has he got Alfred? No, I, I have to take him step by step. He's a big technophobe. Yeah, right. but. He's like, why did I do this earlier? This is such. This made my Has life. He got so much an better. iPhone. Or he had. Know. He used to have a Chromebook. I think you saw it. Yeah, it was, it like was falling apart. It was held by two little threads, and like all the plastic was peeled off, and he had to like hold it like that and hold the the plug in the <laughs> socket as well. Otherwise, it would flicker off, and it would only work if you held it at a certain angle. I was like, David, you've really ran that into the ground. Like, do not feel guilty about treating yourself to a new device <laughs> at this stage. Unbelievable. Uh, but yeah. Liam Neeson. Liam Neeson. <laughs> New AirPods as well. New AirPods coming out in yeah. March. How do you know that? Because weirdly, you said I googled this yesterday. Yeah. Do, do you know what it was? Your oh god. Is it not true? <laughs> no, no. Have I, you lied? I saw a. I saw some related video for something, and it said best knockoff AirPods fifty dollars. Right. And there was a guy reviewing these knockoff AirPods, and then oh. the, the thing after that it said AirPods two. So I looked up AirPods two, uh-huh. and yeah, they seem they do like a matte black version. It's going to come out next month with some other features. It just doesn't excite me at all. <laughs> I like my my bean pods are lovely. I think they I think the features are wireless charging and Hey Siri being. I can't believe that's not part of the. You original. just double tap it. Yeah, you double double tap to activate. Okay, I've got Hey Siri on MacBook now. Did you not have it before? No, I just have had to remove it. It's a special setup you have to do to to enable Hey Siri. Oh, what, that it just picks it up? Yeah. Oh, we'll we'll go over that in Life Hacks 1027. <laughs> I, wow, really? Yeah, I'll, I'll, oh, I'll go through God, it. It's so exciting. Can, can we do Life Hacks now? Life Hacks now? Yeah, yeah, cool. I'm just having a look here. So it's saying that um, 
the potential release date will be within the next couple of months. Latest news, iPods 2, if this is true, it's so shit. AirPods 2 will reportedly sport a grippier new coating to make the plastic less prone to slipping out of your hands and ears. Another feature, uh, improved base, although the design is uh, re- expected to remain the same. Another thing which could be quite cool would be um, that you could have biometric uh, sensors in them, so you'd be yeah, able to have like, tracking. fitness tracking from your ears. So, so but they would about- only work when you go... <laughs> <laughs> For the people who are listening, Yusuf's making a rude gesture with his crotch. I was just stretching my arm. Yeah. yeah just backwards and forwards. Yeah. Um, Racking up steps. Yeah, we're going to do, do a Life Hacks episode. So, hold on. No, no, no. about that. Apparently, if you have an Apple Watch and these new AirPods, the Apple Watch can measure your heart rate, but the AirPods can measure... Temperature? Um, no, like volume, like pulse volume or something. What do you mean the volume? I don't know. Do you mean the I, volume? No, no, no. It to do with like the. I, I don't know. Help me out, man. <laughs> help me out. This <laughs> is your. This is your so, bit. So the the this because I know the Apple Watch has an ECG yeah. apparently. So something to do with because it can feel your blood flowing, like it blood pressure picks up something else. I don't know. It was in a um, it was in a TechCrunch article I read. The bottom line is that you need to buy a pair of AirPods, um, and they'll change your life. Who doesn't in the modern wisdom group have them? Just him. Did George and Jordan both get them? Yep. Off the back of Lifehacks 101. I just, I don't think I would get anything out of The them. trouble is now is that it's got to the point where... Yeah, it's meta now, isn't it? You, to get them, they'd have to be so good. <laughs> we've like created, you, an, we've got, created an entire narrative If you got them immediately around. and they were like, these are quite good. And you I'm got one them, of the people like, yep. and I'm like, these don't stay in my ear properly. The sound's a bit rubbish. It's like, you've got to charge them separately. It, mm. I just, and it looks like you're wearing a tampon in your ear. The whole thing... The whole package just doesn't do it for me. I think you, what you're now doing is... is Justifying yeah. post hoc. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I can see why you'd think that. <laughs> <laughs> However... Because also, if we got you some, that would, I think, make it worse. I, I would honestly be annoyed at you. if you Because I know my birthday's coming up and I know that you've probably... <laughs> you, you've, you've probably, like considered it and I will be very annoyed like and I'm not just saying this like, oh guys don't bother don't give me anything like I'll, I'll be actively upset do you remember okay. what, do you remember what we got him last year it's ham, last year ham, it? got him ham you don't eat ham you just you, you just like to, to like AirPods ham, AirPods are the audi- audible ham AirPods are listening ham <laughs> but you, you, you got try a bit of the ham I did. It was it was all right, but it was so. It was a palm, the palm, the ham. You palm, said you really liked palm ham. Palm yeah, yeah. So, I had, what else? I had a slice horn. of it. And Sho- I was they like, got the shoehorn. Shoe the same one that got the Tom Tank engine birthday oh, card. Shoehorn's incredible. Like it works as a weapon as well. Yeah, it's Dean has one. The ham was okay. Mixed bag on the ham. It was a palm ham, but people have said to me afterwards, "Oh, you shouldn't have just eaten it on its own. You have to like." I it was like a baguette or something. Yeah, it's like someone buying you like a rotisserie chicken. And you just eating it cold out of the packet. Yeah. I see. And I was just like, oh, it's yeah, all right. But it's okay. I see. Because um, we were late to go to Coop. Because we had to go back to Amy's house so you could put the palm ham in the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And this time, I think you're going to have to go back to charge the AirPods. External oh, charger. God. Fine. Um, before we go, what have we got coming up? What episodes are we going to do coming up? So we're, we're going to do, oh, this may come out after Lifehacks 107. So either in the past or the future of podcast, we may have done or will be doing. Yes. Lifehacks 107. Yeah. Um, what it's really like running a business. Yeah. How to survive after university, after we had that one requested. That, the, tr- the trouble with that is we've got to go up to death, haven't we? Uh, and we're, and we're, gonna, we're gonna run out how to we're survive because like, it's everything after university so bear attacks yeah. nuclear holocaust <laughs> famine bear attacks it's the first thing I thought of I mean like, the, the trouble is I don't you know, can't YouTube. get attacked by a bear if you're at university so yeah. you're, 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 you're all those after. there are bear free zones because you once you've matric- matriculated they, they open the gates and you see the massive fields and it goes on for miles and there's bears and yeah. battles and have you not asteroids? Have you not seen it? Like when you open the gates from university, it's just a bunch of like bears. sullen bears. You know, like kind of just kicking their heels on the floor, and you're like, oh, smoking, it's... smoking, <laughs> wearing leather jackets, with one foot against the wall, or oh, I... leaning back. <laughs> I just can't believe how fast they run. Bears, bears, are terrifying. They run fast. Oh yeah, but like proper clumpy, run much as faster well. than you or I could run. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. Mm. I think the trouble with seeing a bear or be a bear that has decided I'm attacking him is there's nothing to do about so it. So I've seen the survival guys where they say you need to like put your hands over your head and go, yeah, yeah. Oh, make yourself as big oh and scary God. as possible. But like, 
I, I would still not back myself to try that and think like, I really hope whoever wrote this isn't just having a laugh because otherwise like you're dead you as better, fuck. Yeah. You are so dead. Um, um, hard. Dead especially a bear with a tarp. Told you about Yeah. <laughs> Like, oh, he's right. on, a, on a bit of a buzz. Yeah, yeah. He's on a backy. He's on a backy buzz. Wearing a leather, wearing a sleeveless leather jacket, like torn off. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. dusters. Yeah. Just say bear on each of them. Piss and hate. <laughs> that was one of the Woody Rathers, wasn't it? Like a bear with a a bear with an axe or a shark with a shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, Which one was a bear with an axe? So, so a bear doesn't have opposable thumbs, and a shark doesn't have hands, and it's underwater. A shotgun it's probably still shoot. Like, where's the shotgun? Is it just mounted here? Oh, terrifying. So the, shark, the shark has to go like... Harness. And then it shoots. Because <laughs> a shark doesn't have a neck either. So it's it, just fake. It just it? does that with its head. Well, you, you could it's argue that an, a shark is all neck. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's just a so face a attached shark, to a neck. It, isn't a shark it? is it the most to terrifying like... thing. I, I honestly can't think of anything worse than... Big python thing. for me. Big squid for me. Really? You know, like the, the giant squid. Yeah, the shark yeah, yeah. Is, a, is a big tube of muscle. They swim 30 miles an hour, man. Like, 10 foot long. Even if you could punch it as hard as you could and it wouldn't. You just have out. to bucking bronco it, like grab it, hug it and just hold on. Like, I tell you what, uh, I tell you what you should follow on Twitter, which is definitely worthwhile, is extinct an- animals and rare animals. Right. If you search that, they're both quite big, uh, <laughs> quite big Twitter accounts. And they just put up like all of this mad megafauna shit from 5 million, 50 million years ago. It's like, here is a extinct giant chipmunk that grew to be eight feet high and had like Jesus like Christ. those things that had six eyes things that had like horns coming out of their head why should yeah, I have not that around now well because so boring there was, there was a look. number of large extinctions and then mammals won and we're part of that I went to see Brian Cox shit I, like that. I can't fucking believe that you went to go he see him abso- absolutely he blow your dick off well, just space time just yeah. being having someone explaining in, using a graph and maths space time you know like, he was saying on Joe Rogan that they've basically for this show they're just filling the entire back of stadiums with LED screens yeah. and they have I think it's like a hundred and something square meters of LED paneling oh, and that's then so expensive per show they just fit it so like Metro Radio Arena might be like 60 but then mm-hmm. they're playing like Wembley and it's like 90 oh, and then they're playing God. somewhere in America and it's like oh we can only get 50 but they just go in and apparently the engineers are just like clagging these very, things it's very cinematic so as he's speaking he's like so they've got the um, so Interstellar the way they create a black hole in Interstellar mm-hmm. is with an algorithm that morphs the the backdrop so they he, they had a star backdrop so black black sky st- and stars run this algorithm and it creates a black hole using what we understand of the science. So it's a, it's a simulation, not a rendering? Yeah. Because oh, so it's an uh, actual simulation. So they plug in the, the um, universal constants wow. to this. So it's, it's, it creates the... Yes. So it is accurate what you see. It's exactly it's like, how yeah. it appears. Yeah. Goodness me. It's, yeah. He just thinks everything's going to be absorbed ultimately in black holes. I love how we sat down for this being like... Mm, I don't know if we'll have enough to talk about. For yeah, we? we've still got <laughs> shitloads to talk about. Being attacked by a bear, space time, fire festival. Only problem racism. is, you come to the end of this and you're like, how do you title it? Yeah, I don't know. If you've got any ideas for what we should call this series, we were going to call it Catching Up or just Samsung like Samsung versus up. Apple. It's just buy a pair of fucking AirPods. <laughs> That's what it should be called. We could we'll get progressively bullied into. If, we, if everyone sends us a quid. We'll buy you some AirPods. <laughs> easily, easily. I'll, I'll have to, but then that'll cause an admin hassle for me because I'll have to go and find everyone who donated a quid, return it to them, and <laughs> just sell, sell a pair of AirPods and then. So, what, you're going you're gonna to pay for the AirPods using one pound donations? No, well, if that's like, one, if you're crowdsourcing it and then you get the AirPods, I have to then return the AirPods and find everyone's pounds uh, and give it back to them. Anyway, um, what else we got coming up? So, we got the House Five. Oh, yeah. I, I sent you that screenshot of that girl who is teaching year threes to do power poses. Oh, And they yeah. call it the superhero pose. So we did an episode on confidence. It's when you were away. You were at a wedding. Um, of course I you think know. I did the confidence one. You did confidence. We You didn't do... Oh, maybe you did. I, I can't that remember. Was another anyway. One. Yeah. Um, oh, it's How to Get Lean. Um, and in that, I cited a, a erroneous study about power poses and 
now it's been trickled down to some year three. You, you're affecting kids' lives, Chris. I, I genuinely am. I'm really sorry, but is there is you apologising. There is a primary school teacher that's making kids do that, and they call it their superhero pose. Um, and I said, "That's really cool. Would you be able to send me a photo?" She said, "Yes," but now she's had to check with each of the parents individually. So you've caused her an admin fucking huge well. amount of downstream. I'm like I messaged her the other day, and I'm like, like really, okay, yeah, yeah, you don't need to do it. Like, I don't really mind. No, 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 no. To be honest, they'll probably get a placebo benefit from it. Mm. Yeah, like will. if they think it's doing something, it's the most it's the most reliable effect in all of pharmacology, isn't it? It's like when you ask you like your Pakistani grandma asks you like, "Do you like some food?" And you're like, oh, "I'm a bit hungry." No, it's all right. No, 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 don't worry. I will. Like, oh, no, no, no. Oh, fuck, she's gone. She's away. No, no, don't worry about it. It's fine. No, no, I, will, I will make. I will do it. And she's like cooking up biryani and like a, a chicken. And you're like, "No, no, no, it's all right." <laughs> Don't worry, none of you. <laughs> um, you know how uh, if you take a drug, there's a <laughs> there's an effect of the drug, like an intended effect, mm-hmm. and then usually a side effect that may we may either understand or not understand. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Is that the case with pl- with the placebo effect? Can you get side effects from placebo? Like, is it if, if is placebo anything that can be measured? And if so, is there a side effect? Oh, I see. Yeah, so you you can influence neurotransmitters and um that it's the crazy thing about placebo is like you can actually produce almost any sign like you can produce skin signs and um like if you give someone what they think is an allergen they might start getting like a, a rash or so wow yeah unbelievable I think, man yeah so, that, so you, and there would be no side effect of that because like, it's just your body reacting how i suppose you could get the side effects that someone expects to get so well, oh, the, the, the amazing thing is, like, the expectation and the power of the mind on all of the human systems is, it's so weird because it, annoyingly, it's like, you have so much control over your body, but you don't have that control. It's like, it's, it's, the, it's just buy-in, isn't it? But, it's yeah. like, the, the, which is why the preamble to so much of this stuff is so important. Mm. Like, if you sell someone, and this again is obviously why... Even if you know. So if you write on a, on a thing, like memory pills and you know that it's sugar, and you're taking it, even though you're the one that put the sugar pills in the thing, it still has an effect. So placebo doesn't get negated by knowing that it's placebo. So then... It must get... It must be down-regulated. So if if I... So back when I was 17 and took Tribulus, (laughs) Mm -hmm. are you saying that because I thought this is working... This is going to be the... That there might have been some change? Or is it not... Are we not yeah. talking hormone level? No, no. Really? Well, like, could do, Fuck. yeah. So actually knowing that it doesn't work is the worst thing that can happen to you. <laughs> Ignorance is bliss. I suppose also, like, taking a, a, t- a tribulus at, at 17, like, you probably suppose, yeah. you probably have all of the, the signs of high testosterone anyway, so... Mm. Yeah. You did, didn't you? Jacked. I don't know what you mean. Just swole. Jacked, 17. I mean, I, I, I feel like I had quite a high testosterone when I was 17. Allergic to nuts and jacked. Yeah. Yeah. So um, another thing, did you see that the How to Survive University, I sent you this screenshot, got shared around a bunch of schools in Papua New Guinea? It's the internet, man. So Mental. there was there was a, a guy that contacted me and said that I don't know whether it's expats with kids out there or whether it's um, Papua New Guineans <laughs> that are coming over to university in the UK, but basically said, like, we've got a lot of students that are 16, 17, they're going to go to university over the next year. I've made them all watch How to Survive University wow. because I think it's it's all of the stuff that they need to know. Shit like that makes me think, like, what did I say? Like, what did <laughs> I know? What well, the, the, the level of responsibility is so much higher when you realise that people actually listen. It's annoying when it's only post hoc and you're like, oh, I'm oh but, but it was quite a good episode. We should just get, like, a big, like, big warning screen at the beginning. Like the following is just an opinion. Not medical advice. Yeah. Please heed. Like legal you medical. Said is a this, doctor. <laughs> you are this, but the following is not medical. So, so advice. I'm going to have to start um, qualifying. I am not your doctor because you right. can't say not a doctor yeah. because you are. That's hilarious. <laughs> what was if that, you, Tony Robbins? I am not your mentor. I am not your guru. <laughs> I am not your doctor. <laughs> yeah. Let's get you on Netflix. I'd love just, to see you on Netflix. Just a, a oh, I'll tell you what. Another awesome statistic for you that Daniel Sloth gave Sloth <laughs> Daniel Sloth gave me and Video Guy Dean was that to record Jigsaw and Dark for Netflix single show hour and a half ish or so of recording 
40 grand each. Per episode? £40,000 to record an hour, like 90 minutes. So that's nowhere near as much as I thought it would be. What, to record yeah, 90 minutes mm. of stuff, 40 grand? And to get it on Netflix? No, just to record it. Like the cost of the cameras, paying all the actors, and there must be like 30 people. It's a, it's a comedy special stand-up show of him on his own. Oh, I thought you meant Dark, the uh, like the, the German TV show. Oh, no. So it's a... Was that what you were thinking? No. No. So it's a comedy comedian, stand-up, on stage, 90 minutes, just him, uh, recorded right. to the spec that Netflix require it to be done at. And then he did it. And what he did was he'd funded it out of his own pocket. Did Netflix pay ahead of time? No. So he was doing this and it hadn't even been picked up by Netflix. So, But his agent was like, look, like, fuck it, you're doing this tour, you're doing your routine. And he does a new routine every year. He's like, look, you need to... What? So you make it to the spec of Netflix just in case they put in a bid? In case they want it. And that's oh. what he did. That's how... And he'd done both of these things. And apparently, like, the last show of the tour, and it was the one that he'd recorded for Jigsaw, pretty much, like, that day or the next day, got off stage call from Netflix, we want it. And the way that they did it, they will, once they accept that they want it, they'll front you the cash, because not everyone's got 80 grand lying around. And they said, got 120 grand for you here. And he went, thank you very much. Cost me 80. Pushed it back to them, like took the money, gave them the videos. Wow. So you, so there were presumably people that are going broke by making a production. Netflix Running out of working broke. capital, essentially. There must be actually, yeah. So is there, so... He, he profited that in that instance, but is there is there no? Or he gave them the balance back. No, no, no. I think so he, he, I think he the took profit. the what? I think. But is there any other gain from having a show on Netflix? What massive exposure? Like he's is that it? Conan O'Brien and so I don't know whether he actually gets paid for it. I'm going like to guess they'll have then. to buy. They'll have to buy the thing. Because I, I, I've often wondered. So, so Darren Brown is a good example of this. Had a bunch of Channel Four documentaries and has put them all on Netflix now. Mm. And then he's done his most recent one for Netflix. Yeah. So, like, how is that money? Maybe it's not Darren. Maybe it's like it's the Channel Four legal company. team that are then because they own the rights to distribution. It won't be they, Darren that owns the rights. I don't think so. Definitely won't. And then also, Spotify. If you're a band on Spotify, do you get paid by listen minutes? Or? Yeah. So you get paid per stream, but it's a, a it's pittance. It's tiny, 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 tiny amounts. Um, it just all feels very much like the because if it's not in it for the content producers, the quality content is just going to plummet. Over time. Well, that's all, all mm-hmm. the... Uh, but I suppose that it just becomes the buyer's market for content. Like, if Netflix have a monopoly on on content or Spotify, <clears throat> yeah, you can sell your, your stand-up show to Hulu stand-up mm-hmm. or whatever, and no mm-hmm. one's going to care. And so then people start putting in bids and broking themselves potentially by... Because there must be shows that don't make Netflix, but they've recorded it to the specification. I don't yeah. think... I think based <clears throat> on what Daniel was saying, the way that he did it is very alien. Like most people uh, okay. fronting it and having such a big dick that they think I haven't been asked to record this, but I'm so confident in my quality that I'm going to do it. Make it. And he done it. So he had no hedge. That's so he's doing it anyway, though, isn't he? Zero so stop. He's loss, recording, the, but not at the spec of Netflix. Right. So like, he's taking a small risk. He's taking a lot. Like I don't think he'd have. Like he wasn't. He was recording them and put them out on YouTube, but it wasn't. It would have been like five grand or something probably to have got mm-hmm. it done. Like. It's, who was really annoyed at Daniel Sloss for the, the windy neck in comments on Twitter? Do you remember? Where he was like, it's so arrogant <laughs> to assume that out of all the people in the world, there's only one of them that's good enough for you. Wind your neck in. Yeah. Like, so there's what- a, number, a lot of people got cross. A lot of people. And we're, the views are picking up. There's this weird thing that YouTube does where it's like, there's a little hump that you've got to get over. And we did it with Sargon and it's happened with Daniel as well now. And it's like, it just sort of trickles along, trickles along. And then it just gets over this ridge and it just fucking free wheels away. So we've done like more than 50% of the views over the last couple of days, even though it's been up for like nearly two weeks now. It's, it's, it's whether, because we have that with our videos, like the, view, the videos that have a lot of views keep getting views. Mm. Videos that have no views get no views. It's mm. true. So there Very must be early. a... This is one for maybe Video Man Dean can do a cameo. Exp- but he, 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 you can't hear him and you can't see him when he comes in front of the camera. Nothing happens. Anyway, so to finish, it could just be code. Right? Yeah, it's lines of Matrix code. What else have we got that's coming up? We're going to do um, so life hacks, maybe relationships. If one or four, keen on it, we need to do the Instagram, Instagram funnel. Oh yeah, 
uh, life. I think we've got enough for a life fails as well. If you, uh, so I've got I you, have. you've got enough for I, the whole entire podcast. Enough. Yeah, <laughs> I've got under life fails. So I had one. It came to me in the same way I've been keeping keeping a life hacks diary. I've been keeping a life fails diary. And a life fail came to me. Noted it down. But I was in the gym. And I was like, brilliant. I've got one because I didn't have any. Mm. Noted it down in the gym. Went back to training. What did you note it down on? Did you have your iPod shuffled? Just or? on notes. Just on, on your notes. phone? Yeah. Just uh, okay. Thing. So are you, are you bringing your phone to the gym now? I need to for programming, which is slightly annoying. Uh, but it's, I'm pretty good. I'm still quite, like, disciplined yeah. with it. Uh, hey, Siri. Yeah, I could have done. But... Even while you're in a handstand. Hey, Siri. See that? Double tap. I can't do single arm handstand. Um, That's a selling point. So, handstand. Hey, Siri. <laughs> you wouldn't even have to do that. And I've got life fails. And I've gone back and I've had a look. And I've just written the word anal. God. And I'm like, but are you you're about to say forgotten? Yeah. Anal. I hate when that happens. Sometimes I'll I'll like I'll be like, oh, I've got an appointment on a calendar. So I go to the, the date and I just write 9 a.m. 21st April. And then you get to the time and you're like, oh no. <laughs> this could be <laughs> the best example of that is what you told me that you went to see Yusuf and he was sat eating a bowl of spinach. <laughs> and you're like, why are you eating spinach? Well, that was you're successful. Like, I don't know, it was in my calendar. <laughs> Well, well, because I trust the research that past Yusuf has done. But surely it's so. It's like when we go. It's like when we go to Coop and you order a whole chicken, and we mm-hmm. go, "Why are you doing that?" And you say, well, "It's because I need to eat more." Because you can't just if you just have spinach the one time in a bowl. No, but if you just eat more when you're at Coop, like that, surely that needs it to be, become a habit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I mean, the, so <laughs> what would have been probably a little bit more accurate would have been had a reminder come up as I arrived at your house saying, "Remember to eat," and you'd have been like, "What?" How much? <laughs> why? When? Mm. Like, at least the anal thing would have been like, it, it would have prompted me, at least I'd have been able to remember what I was talking about, but I have no idea what it is. So it may come back to me or it may not. Does but, anal not trigger anything? Because anal's not, it can't relate to that many it's not, things. I don't think it was yeah. about yeah. anal. I think it must have, I must have written something. It's auto corrected it to anal. And then I've, so I don't know. Call, call oh no, that's, that's T9, isn't it? <laughs> Remember the old, like, number yeah, of texting? Right. Coal, cock, and anal are all the same combination <laughs> of... knowledge of stuff like this. Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> uh, right. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Please do not forget to press subscribe. Share the episodes. Propionfitness.com will be linked in the show notes below. And make sure that you go and check out... What should I go and check out? Go check out the episode with Rory Sutherland uh, from a couple of weeks ago. It's absolutely good. Epic. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.